My name is Martin Blackstein, and I'm a medical oncologist at Mount Sinai Hospital and Princess Margaret Hospital and uh, the Department of Medicine of the University of Toronto. Hi, I'm Jay Wender. I'm the Chief of Surgery at Mount Sinai Hospital, and I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons who specializes in uh, sarcoma care. Sarcomas are a, a rare form of uh, cancer that uh, affect uh, bone and soft tissue. They come from the middle part of our body, from the glue that holds our insides and outsides together. That tissue that we tend to think of as supportive or structural tissue, like bone and cartilage, muscle, tendon, uh, and they arise from those uh, organs. There's uh, many different types of these sarcomas. They affect many different body parts, not just the uh, arms and the legs. And at uh, Mount Sinai, we have the uh, largest um, type of program looking after patients with all types of these tumors at all body sites uh, from, from across the country. So, so the prognosis for uh, patients with sarcomas um, is, is probably scary for most people before they come here. And I think the majority of patients we see come here expecting to hear that they're going to have an amputation and that they have a high chance of dying. And part of that comes from uh, the fact that there is a lot of misinformation uh, on the web, uh, the World Wide Web, which is where most people uh, go to look now. But the reality is that the prognosis for patients with sarcomas has never been better. If we take all patients who show up at the door, the cure rate's about 70% now, and in Terry Fox's day, it was 10%. So the, the improvement has just been dramatic in, in 20 years. The prognosis has changed dramatically within my career. When I started, the overall survival for children and adolescents with osteosarcoma was in the neighborhood of 10%. With the development of adjuvant chemotherapy, the survival rate for adolescents today with osteosarcoma at this hospital, and we've just published uh, on over 200 cases seen here in the last 15 years in June 2009, was 70%. And that statistic is as good as anywhere in the world. But what that still means is that we lose 30% of those patients and losing one is still too many. I think because of the expertise we have here, we're able to explain to the patients what their disease is. And for many of them, it's the first time that they really have been able to speak with someone who's familiar with the disease and who has seen enough cases that they can explain in lay language to them what the disease is, what they're going to go through, why they're going to go through it, and what the expected outcome is. The uh, fundraising efforts really um, can help a lot of different uh, areas. They certainly help with our research, both clinical research into um, developing new surgical methods to improve uh, cancer safety and to improve uh, patient uh, outcomes from a point of uh, better function. Um, a lot of our uh, research initiatives and our research funding supports um, basic science research or translational research. And a lot of that relates to a genetic research that we do trying to identify uh, abnormalities in patients' tumors that uh, will predict if they're going to have a good outcome or a bad outcome, how they may respond to a certain chemotherapy or a chemotherapeutic regimen so that we can treat patients in a better way. We're working on trying to identify stem cells in cancer, which is a new hot area um, to which there are uh, new developments being made in many um, cancer areas. And it's probably going to be become, become very important in sarcoma care in developing new treatments for a patient uh, cure. Be, besides our research, um, a lot of our uh, fundraising efforts uh, go to support um, broader clinical care, um, in particular nursing, and nursing plays a huge role. Um, we have surgical nurses, uh, nurses in the chemotherapy clinic, specialized nurses on the floor who do inpatient chemotherapy. And this is a specialized unit that we have, so our own patients get their chemotherapy on our floor. It really is great for continuity of care when they come for a biopsy, when they come for chemotherapy, when they come for surgical care, 
or sometimes even end of life care. It's all in the same unit with the same groups of patients. So teaching nurses um, those special skills and especially teaching them uh, special chemotherapy skills that they can then pass along to other nurses here and elsewhere is uh, one of the uh, big efforts that we've made. And it's certainly gone a long way to improve the care that we can provide um, patients. And the other um, way that uh, this helps is in just general medical training. We, we train a huge um, numbers of students, um, medical students and residents, but in particular we have a uh, really world-renowned fellowship training program. And so this uh, entails training uh, orthopedic surgeons from across Canada and from around the world who would come here to learn the special skill set that we have so that they can take those back to their uh, home institution and develop a similar program. And uh, I must say, one of the things we're very proud of is that we've probably trained about three quarters of the orthopedic surgeons who do this type of oncology care across Canada. And so we really have a network um, that's developing across the country so that the level of care and expertise that we can provide is now being available in other uh, major centers who uh, do sarcoma care. And by having developed this uh, sort of a network, we can uh, enroll those patients from those centers into our research studies. So uh, many of the centers across the country have patients enrolled in our clinical research studies and in basic science um, research studies. And uh, all of those efforts uh, certainly um, are uh, helping with our long-term goal, which is uh, improving uh, patient care and improving patient outcome. I think that the, the message is hopes around the corner and hopes coming and the types of research that we do for sarcomas and other research really has uh, things that are being worked on in the lab that are close to coming to fruition. And I could say that even from some of the research that we're doing now in the laboratory, I think that we're probably within a few years of at least bringing some of the ideas that are in the lab to clinical trials to actually be able to help improve patient care.